Let's see, my class helper, Adeline. Would you like to pass these out, Adeline? All right, let's see, who do we have so far? We have Aya and Finn. Hello, Aya and Finn. We'll give everybody just a little bit more time until we start. There comes Catherine. Good morning, Catherine. Okay, or not good morning. I guess it is still morning. Okay, yeah. Okay, so for science, I'm gonna tell you a second, Harrison, for science this week, we get to start learning about bats. That's awesome. So. While I'm talking to you all about bats and showing you some pictures of bats, if you want, you can color in this piece of paper that I emailed to your parents. You can also print it off of Jupiter Ed. And it shows you all the different parts of a bat. Thank you, Adeline. So it shows you that here are their wings, their arms, their fingers, their furry bodies. Oh, so bats don't have feathers, they have fur. And then on the back, it says bats are the only mammals that can fly. So they're mammals, they're not birds because they have fur instead of feathers. They have, they don't lay eggs like birds. Their babies are alive when they're born. They're warm blooded. If you touch a bat, it's gonna be nice and warm. And bat babies drink milk from their moms when they're little. They even nurse their babies. And bat wings are made out of thin layers of skin, which are stretched over their arms. Look at this. This is the bat's arm. And those are the bat's fingers. Those long things are the bat's fingers. And there's skin in between the fingers. And that makes its wings. Right up here, this says this is the bat's thumb. That's how it hangs. Where are the bat's fingers? Right here. Those are the bat's fingers. Wow. Okay. Those are big fingers. I know. I'm going to share my screen here. I just thought that was, I thought, at first I just thought that was all part of the wing. I know. Isn't that, isn't that funny? So here are. I'm going to color in this. Some bats. Can y'all at home, can y'all see this screen? Yes, I get it. Okay, wonderful. We're going to look at some different types of bats. This is the Mexican free-tailed bat. So they live in North and South America. They live where we live. Wow. And ooh, Ford this one's is, the American one. This is the Mexican free-tailed bat, but they live where we live. And they spend, oh, Eileen, I'm talking, they spend their summers right where we live and then when it gets a little bit too cold for them in the winter they migrate or they fly south to where it's warmer in Mexico so they live where I'm talking they live in caves and buildings and bridges and they have yeah. an echolocation to find their insects at night they eat insects and the biggest Bat colony of Mexican free-tailed bats is in Austin, where we live. And look, here's a picture of it. That's on Congress Street Bridge. Look at all those people standing out there waiting for the bats to come out. And there's all the bats coming out. They come out every evening and they eat so many insects and bugs. There's about 1.5 million bats but, but, that live under Congress Bridge. But when That's so that, cool. Why does she not like to eat in? Why oh, did she not like to eat the cricket? That's a good question, Aya, because some bats eat insects. They're called insectivores. And some bats eat fruit. They're called fruit bats. So certain types of bats eat different things. Mexican free-tailed bats eat insects. Yes, Ford. What does migrate mean? Migrate means to fly a really long distance to get somewhere else. So they migrate from North America in the winter when it gets really cold. They migrate or fly. They all fly to Mexico where it's warmer. Yes, Elliot. Good job raising your hand. Yes, yes it is. You're right, Elliot. That's in downtown. You might have already seen this. Okay, so those are. Those are Mexican free-tailed bats. Let's see what's next. Oh, these are called little brown bats. They kind of look a lot like Mexican free-tailed bats, don't they? And they live in North America too. 
And look, they normally live in buildings like attics. They eat insects too, <laughs> just like the Mexican free-tailed bat. They also eat insects. You so see that his face? That guy is fluffy, puffy, lemon, oh, jumpy. Fluffy face, they're so cute. And these kind yeah, of bats so are endangered kind. because of there's a disease that's killing them, these type of bats. So we gotta, and then I think it's called white nose disease. We'll read more about it in some books this week. Then this bat is huge. This bat is called the giant flying fox bat. It's enormous. And they, when they open their wings, their wings are about five feet tall or five feet long, which is about as tall as I am. Can you imagine with a bat opened its wings and they'd be about as tall as I am? Wow. And they don't use echolocation because they eat fruit. They don't need echolocation to find bugs. These bats use their sense of sight and their sense of smell to find fruit. They live in little, in like islands in Southeast Asia in the rainforest. And they're threatened. There's not a lot of them left because of deforestation. Hi, Miss Eccles. We're just finishing up here. And then we've got the vampire bat. Vampire bats don't live anywhere around here. They live in caves in South and Central America. And they don't actually like suck blood. They just make, I don't know if you can see from this picture right here, usually when they're nocturnal, so at night they crawl out of their roost and they go to like a farm animal or a big animal. This is a picture of, I think it looks like maybe a pig or a cow or something. And they just make a tiny little cut, a tiny little cut. And then they just, with their tongues, they lap up the blood that comes out, a couple little drops. Normally the animal doesn't even wake up. It doesn't hurt them, it doesn't even wake up. And then the last one, we have the Eastern red bat. And sometimes you can even see these around Austin, although they're, it's a little rare. They eat insects. They're so cute, look how fluffy they are. They're so adorable. And they kind of have a little bit of a reddish tinge to them. And they live in trees, so they roost in trees. Okay, so just a quick, quick, quick intro to bats today. We will learn way more about bats this week, but it is now time for library. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. We're gonna watch a brain pop about bats this week. We're gonna read two that, that was like two minutes. We're gonna do a bat craft. We'll do way more fun bat things this week. This was just a little intro to bats. So bats I'm gonna- was just Very, seconds. very short. Yes, I'm gonna check off science. And next on our schedule well, is the library. You in Here comes Miss Eccles. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> Goodbye. What is that? Super bat. Super bat. So, hi everybody. Um, I'm just getting set up, but here's the sneak preview that I just gave to the friends in the classroom. I think I'm thinking bats too. <laughs> I love that. So we're gonna have super bat as our story today. So we're going to start with a little quick bat for a cute story. I know, and Google mix scissors. Yes, they've got scissors. Oh, yeah, awesome. And super bat making. <laughs> All right, friends. So I am, yes, I, we're going to read that today. We're going to make a super bat. Oh, do we have a mystery word? No, but we have bat myth. So a myth is something that could either be true or false. And that's going to be our little starter game today. Then we're going to read super bat. Then we are going to cut out our super bats, practice our cutting skills. And if we've got time, we can even color our super bats to turn them in, or color our bats to turn them in to super bats. Yes, you can bring them home today if you do not have a chance to finish it. So let me share my iPad screen. Okay, I got to change that setting right here on Ms. Bandrady's computer. I love the way my friends are sitting patiently. If you are in the classroom right now, you can go ahead and put away your bat picture that Ms. Bandrady gave you. Because I'm going to give you a new one. Oh, More bats. Bats everywhere. All right, I think well, I got it. You know what? Bats are only mammals that can stop. Okay. Three, two, one. There we go. So now 
I can see my screen. Now, friends, I am hopping over to a non-fiction book to share a couple bat nuts and a little bat rescue story. So, Ms. Vandrandy was just teaching you all about different kinds of bats. I thought we could start with baby bats. Does anybody remember from last week, and you can raise your hand so we're not shouting out, because it's hard to hear people when we shout out, what do we call a baby bat? Without shouting out, raise your hand if you think you remember. I see two friends here raising their hands. Wheeler, what do you think? That's right, a baby bat is if called a pup. Yes, if there was more than one, Ford was helping us remember it, there would be pups. Now, when baby bats are born, myth or truth, okay? Are they blind? True or false? What do we think? If you think it's true that they are blind when they are born, raise your hand. Okay, hands down. If you think that's false, Ms. Eccles made that up. You can raise your hand now. Some people think that's false. So baby bats are blind when they're born. Now, do you think that they have hair? Yes, hair, no hair. When, right when they are first born, they do not have any hair and they can't fly. So who do you think has to take care of them? Their mom has to take care of them and they drink their mother's milk until they're old enough to fly. Yes, so in this picture, I'm zooming in, you can see the baby bat. Is this a newborn baby bat? Or is this one a little bit older? A baby bat. It's a baby bat, but is it newborn or is it a little bit older bat pup? Older, how do we know? Raise your hand if you know. Adeline? Yeah, has them for here's a Gambian e palleted bat flying with their mother. Very cute. All right, here's just a quick little bat rescue story. So see these baby bats? They're so cute. These baby bats are from Australia. And during a in the rainforest, the wind can sometimes knock the baby bats to the floor. So wildlife workers will come into the rescue and take the bats to the bat hospital. Once they're there, they wrap them up in blankets to keep them warm, just like if their mother was clutching them, that's our word from last week, holding them tight to their chest, and they feed them. What does it look like they're eating? No. No. And when they're strong enough, they get to go back out into the wild. Those are just a few fun little bat facts to start us off today. You want to work? Wheeler says he wants to work at a bat hospital. All right. We are going to switch gears. And we're going to do a fiction book right now. When I say fiction, that means I'm telling you this book. Telling you what about this book? It's not real. Yeah, it's not real. And we can see from the illustration here a clue about why it's not real. How do we know it's not real? This guy is a superhero. Yeah, yeah. it's his outfit, right? He doesn't look like the bats we just saw. Bats are real, but would we usually see bats dressed up in super outfits? Um, no, not no. at all. So that's the part not that is true. not real. Although in this book, you are going to hear a few true things about bats. So one quick question before we read our book by Matt Carr is if you became a superhero, please don't shout this out. Which superpower would you most like to have? I love the way hands went up and I didn't hear anybody shouting out. That's awesome. Charles, which superpower would you like to have? Um, all of them. All of them, okay. He'll take every power you can think of. All right, that's Charles's answer. Hey, Aya, I'm coming to you. Um, I would like to have the superpower to have a bow and arrow that's on fire. A what that is on fire? A bow and arrow. A bow and arrow. Oh, a bow and arrow on fire. Okay. And I've not heard that one before. Very cool. All right. I'm going to get, let's see, I see Finn's hand is up. Um, 
I would um want to have a fireball in my Fire. hand mm -hmm. because like like turn the cat. Oh, okay. Like turn the cat. Thank you for and sharing that. Do you know like Tom? Well, well, you can like wait. Well, you can. So hit. it's a game on the iPad. It's a game on the iPad, and you can like uh, hit him in the head, and it'll be like. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna have to get that game. I have an iPad, but I don't have that game. I've been missing Wait. out. <laughs> Play and like. <laughs> He's a super cat. A super cat. Oh, there's a cat in in this book. I'll have to keep an eye out for him. All right, thank you, Finn. Let's see. Let's do Vina and Birdie, and then check in with my friends in the classroom who are really patiently raising their hand. All right, Vina, which superpower would you like? All of them. All of them. Okay, Birdie, what do you think? Flying. Flying. Yeah, super bat looks like he's flying. Okay, thank you. So friends in the classroom, you were so patient. Let's start with Wheeler. Um, run really fast and fly. Wheeler, if you couldn't hear him, he said run really fast and fly. Fourth. Invisibility. Ooh, fourth says, sneak up on people with the power of what? Invisibility. Oh, invisibility. Ah, like Harry Potter when he's got his cloak on. All right, Colin. Wait, say that again, Colin. Oh, like Harry Potter when he's got his what on? Oh, he wants a, uh, Colin wants some type of escalator. Miss Van Der a bucket of Harry Potter and his what on? Harry Potter when he wears he has a special cloak which is like a jacket and invisibility cloak. That's what what makes Harry Potter invisible. Thank you, Colin. All right, make sure your mask is up over your nose. All right, Adeline is waiting patiently with her hand raised. Oh, yeah. Adeline would like all of them. What about you, Harrison? All of them is really popular. It is. Not sure. I think I would like to fly. That would be mine. Or maybe time travel. All right, friends. So let's see what kind of superpowers super bat. I'll do time travel. This book was written and illustrated by Matt Carr. And guess what? He made it on the computer using computer design programs, which I think is pretty cool. Can you all see the book from where you are and friends at home? Yep. Can we see it? Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, but I have one question. How do you time travel? How do you time travel? Well, it, I don't know that anybody can time travel, but this power would mean that I could choose a time in the past or a time in the future and think, I want to go to the year 1903. Oh, so like, I think I watched the show about my, about mm -hmm. my little pony time traveling, like, Time traveling means like if you have breakfast and then you have the power to time travel, you can mm -hmm. like go to dinner time and you can like pick, oh, I want to do dinner. Yeah. So like that's how you do time travel? It would happen like boom. Well, yeah, that's how it would work kind of. Okay, so when we are reading the story, remember friends, if we have something to say, we can raise our hand so I can stop and call on you. Or if I ask you a question, then you can answer it, okay? But I'll try to remind you if I want you to raise your hands or not. So here we go. Starts like this. Now remember, when to bat sleep? Say it if you know it. Morning. Morning. Yeah, they sleep in the morning all day. So keep that in mind, because that makes the part of the story make a little more sense. It was the middle of the day, and Pat the bat could not do what? Go outside, because he be a superhero. Yeah, he couldn't go outside, but what is he, what's different about Pat the Bat than all the other bats who are around? He could not. He's not sleeping, and he wants to be a superhero. Yep, he could not sleep, because he couldn't stop thinking about his favorite superheroes. He was bored of hanging around in the dark cave, and he wanted to be special just like the heroes in his favorite comics. And then an idea hit him with a pow. Yes, Wheeler, is your hand up or are you stretching? Uh, my hand's up. Did you know 
Oh, I did not know that. Wheeler just shared with me that the Flash, the superhero I think is an X-Men, is fast enough to time travel. That would work for me. All right, so Pat got his great idea in his brain and he set to work. He got out his mom's sewing machine and his wings, ouch, they kept getting in the way of the sewing machine's needle. It was going rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat. And his mom had to shout out, Keep the noise down. It's one o'clock in the morning. You should be, what? Sleeping. Uh, sleep. But he kept working and in a few hours, his outfit was ready. He was super bad. <laughs> and there he is. You can see he's really excited about that. If I get it super close, you can even see his little smile. When the other bats woke up, they were all surprised. I'm super bat, said Pat. Wow, said his friend Gary. What are your superpowers? I've got super hearing, said Pat excitedly. Did you know what his friend said? So do we. Hmm, good point, thought Pat. That made him feel a little bit, what do you think? Sad. Yeah, he was looking for a superpower, but he doesn't feel so super about that anymore. So all the other bats gathered around to see the super bat. One of them asked, can you lift a car with your big muscles? Or can you shoot laser beams out of your eyes? And Pat thought about that. And he said, well, no, but I can. What's this? What's he doing? Fly! And all the other bats said, we can all fly. What else can you do? So Pat tried to think of another super skill. He felt like every bat in town was staring at him and he was nervous. Ha ha ha, said the bat. Oh, he said, I can use something to see and find my way in the dark. What superpower do bats have that lets them see in the dark? We talked about it last time. It starts with an E. Uh, can you raise your hand? Echolocation. Raise your hand. Echolocation. Yes, Wheeler. Echolocation. Echolocation. That's right. It allows bats to find their way in the dark. And his friend said, we can all do that too. So we can see. His friend's choices were making Pat feel a little bit sad. So he walked home, his wings were drooped, his ears were flopped, and he wasn't feeling very super bat-like anymore. I'm just a normal bat in a silly outfit, he sighed. He was trying not to cry. Just as Pat was about to rip off his suit and his cape and throw them away, his supersonic hearing picked up a faint cry. Now look carefully at this illustration. What do we think these little mice might be saying? Help! 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 help. That's right! Help! Help! A big cat had trapped the family of mice. Pat's wings spread out, his ears perked up, and he flew across the city as fast as his wings could carry him. Someone in this uh, apartment building said, is it a bird? Someone down here said, is that a plane? And here they said, er, I think it's a bat in a funny costume. Now what superhero does it make us think of when we hear, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's... Ooh. Usually that's Superman, but yeah, in our book it's a bat in a silly costume. So let's find out what happened. Pat. Now friends, we should know what this word means from Stella Luna. Swooped. What is swooping? It means fly. Yes, he swooped. He flew right down. I see some swooping online and I see some swooping in the classroom. Down like a blur of fur. Blur of fur means he's going super fast. And the big bad cat took a swat. The big bad cat took a wham. But luckily, both times, he missed the bat. So Pat dived back and forth as fast as his little wings could carry him and zoomed around until the cat got a little bit scared and decided to run away. 
The mic I got a little freaked out. Yeah. He's like, what is this bat like? Yeah, he's like, it's not worth it. I, I'm going to go somewhere else and get some cat food. So, the yeah. mice are free. Like, I'm hungry. You saved us. They cried. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This little mouse, see this little cute guy? You know what he's saying? My hero. Who are you, oh masked crusader? Pat smiled. Me? Oh, I'm no, no one's that special or super. And you know what? Look who had followed him. His friend said, oh, yes, you are. They followed him across the town and had seen him rescue the mice. You do have a superpower and you had it all along. You are courageous. You are brave. So to be courageous or brave means that when he saw somebody needed help, even though there was a big scary cat, did that stop him? No, no. he still wanted to help. He still did what he could to help the little mice. So as Pat flew back to the bat cave for a good day's sleep, his friends flew behind him all the way. And he realized all along that he had not just been special, but that he was Super bat! Ta-da! And that's the end of the story. So in honor of Pat the Bat, I sent a home for you all. And if you don't have it, you can just sketch or draw one on um, paper or on a whiteboard. But in the classroom, we are going to get a super bat each, except our bat, you can see right here, are not in super bat outfits and they're not cut out. So you're gonna get your scissors out and you are going to carefully follow the dotted lines the best you can. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. This is practice. We're gonna cut out our super bat. At home, if you don't have a super bat, once I hand these papers out, I'm gonna put this picture of super bat on the screen so we can try to trace it and copy it and draw it together. But if you have one of these, get it out and cut it out. Alrighty. I hear some really careful cutting here. I see friends following directions. I am starting on the wing. Oh, someone just shared they're starting on the wing. That seems like a good place to start. Oop, I see Vina's cutting her bat. I see Finn's cutting her his bat at home. see the super bat up on the screen in just a second. I see. All right. Oh, this is my one from last time. We were just doing this in Miss uh, oh, Blank Chapter. It's so cute. So that's just one way you can draw or color yeah, your super like bat. So cute. If you want to. Yours doesn't have to look like mine. We were just yeah, talking like about so how to draw cute. different parts. Thank you, Aya. That's hey, really fun. My dad's computer has something like that, so I can draw whatever I want. Oh, that's nice. Some people drew hearts in their bats because they said that his superpower when they made their bat could be love. Other people wanted to know a little bit about how to draw a star. So if you want to draw a star, 
One way you can do it is by drawing like a T, a lowercase T, and then draw an X on top of it. That's one way to make a star. You can also make a star by doing a bunch of triangles. I think I'll stick with the triangle idea. So that's the star that way. If I can't do if it. If you decide to. You could also draw a rainbow or whatever. Rainbow. Sort of I'm good at rainbows. Because I got mine. So if you're I'm not cutting a super bat out, you can I got my super rainbow mock up pack. Draw so it freehanded easy. on your screen. <laughs> Great. Okay, so let's do this. But first, I need to finish coloring that. So, if you're in the standard use classroom, I have the recycling bin so that we can throw our trash away. So, here, Ben, do you have paper scraps for me? Yes, we do. Thank you, friend. I have a seal on my head. Oh, I'll come back. Come here, Ellie. Thank you, friend. We want to keep our classroom a nice, tidy place. about this. Is it this one? Oh, look, there's the echolocation. All right, so scientists called that chi or chiroptera, which is a Greek name that means hand wing. So that's another language. You know how you all learn Spanish with maestra? This is another language called Greek. So chiroptera means hand wing. And that's because, that, because bats have four fingers and a thumb, like us. So they have thumbs. I knew it. Because you, you just said that. that. So friends, I'm zooming you into you our nonfiction bat book. Can you see the four fingers and thumb of the bat? They're right there. Amanda, Andy. Oh, yes, I Can I see the wet? Can I see the way you did the star again? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Thanks. The triangle way, right? Uh -huh. So start with a triangle pointing up. Then you okay? another sort of triangle going to the side. Another triangle going to the other side. Then you do a triangle kind of going diagonally, so towards the corner of your papers. And then one more triangle going diagonally. And it takes a minute to get a hang for the star. So if the star looks a little different the first few times you do it, that's okay. We're all learning. Okay, I guess I'll do it the T way. And then the other way you can do it is you T. draw a T, then T. you can draw an X on top of the T. And that's another way to make a star. That's a pretty good one. Yes, yeah, let's see. Ooh, I see Ford had, oh my gosh, you've been making bats all day. So you've got like a bat family now. Yeah. Now your bat has three stars on it. Your bat has some grays. If you are in the classroom, turn your bat over on the back though and make sure your name's on it so that if your bat falls, it can find its way back to you. Come on, write your name on the back of your bat. Ooh, I need to 
bring paper scraps because they're the recyclers too. Elliot. Great. Let's recycle. You've got a little more cut, but you know what I can see? You have already cut out the bottom of the bat and the whole wing right here. All right, Adeline is writing her name, Harrison is writing his name. It's a wonderful job doing following directions. I actually don't know. What do you call a group of bats? A flock? <laughs> I don't know. I like that. Is it a flock? I, I might be wrong. That's my guess. Hey friends, we have a question. You all might know this. What do you call a whole group of bats together? A flock of bats? Bam a colony. Oh, you call it a colony of bats when they're all together. That's kind of like the whole, like, if you call it, see a group of owls, you call it a parliament of owls. All right, for friends who are at home, um, it's 11.45, so it is time for me to go. Thank you so much for being here today for making baths with me. You're very sweet. I will see you on Wednesday, okay? Goodbye. And I'll help you guys make baths. My super pack of rainbow markers almost fell. Bye 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 bye. Oh, I love that, Adeline. Oh, very nice, Aya. Good job, Finn. Let's do some checking off. Nice cutting, um, Colin. Very good. Very nice cutting, Vina. Wonderful. Thank you, disciples. Yeah. See you later. All right, we're gonna check off library on our schedule there. Next on our schedule is math. Let's finish up those bats. Bye. Y'all did a great job with those bats. Nice cutting. Okay, so let's start finishing up. When you, if you're in the classroom and you're finished with your bat, you can put it in your red folder to take home. We just checked off library on our schedule, and we found out that next on our schedule started with an M, and then an A, and then a TH. So, mm, math. It's math. Right. Yes, math is next. And then it's story time. And I have a cool book for us to read about bats in story time. Okay, so for math today, let's get out those dark orange textbooks. And Vina, I know you don't have your textbook at home, sweetie. Don't worry about it. I did send your parents an email if they want to print this out, but they don't have to, okay? You can just follow along. Okay. It's up to you, okay? okay? So they did. Okay, great. So get out those dark orange math textbooks. We are going to need a pencil today. And you're then keep looking until you find it. You're going to turn to page 57 of 5 and a 7 in those dark orange math textbooks. Yeah. And you need these to count 10 things. You can use these. And you're going to need a pencil for this. Yeah, I think the color. All right, nice job. Good. Wheeler what family. page are we on? We're on page 57, a five and a seven. Page 57. Page 57. Page 57. Page 57. Why? They just started living here. Yeah. Page two, two minutes ago. Just like this. Good, you found it, Wheeler and Ford. Why are we not doing the ants? I thought I can catch you with the party. Are we doing the ants next? No, we're not doing the ants. Here we go, Adeline. Okay, so let's look at page 57. I see a kid 
He's got a bowling ball. And, and how many bowling pins does he have down here? Then raise your hand here. How many bowling pins? Let's count them. Yeah, y'all are telling me that he has ten. 10 bowling pins. That's right. Y'all are telling me that he has 10 bowling pins. Ten. All right, Harrison, what do you need? Your hands up. Oh, okay. Thank you, Miss Kiana. Okay, so 10 bowling pins. Have y'all ever been bowling? That's my help. Has anybody ever been bowling before? No, I haven't. Some of you have, some of you haven't. Okay, so you, what you do with bowling is you like roll the bowling ball down the lane and you try to knock over as many pins as you can. Venus Ben, yeah. So then let's go ahead and turn the page to the next page, page 58. It looks like that kid knocked over some bowling pins. Looks like he knocked some over on page 58. Yeah, it looks like on this page or on this side of the page, there's all those 10 frames. Remember we were doing those last week. There's all those 10 frames. And then on this side of the picture, there's a group of bowling pins. So what you're gonna do with your pencil is you're gonna match the number of bowling pins to the number of dots in the 10 frame. So we'll do the first couple together. I want you to use pencil, but I'm gonna use a black crayon so y'all can see really well, even at home. But let's count those first bowling pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven bowling pins in that first group. And we need to figure out, we need to match them which one of these 10 frames also has seven in it? Let's see. This first one, the first row we know is five, right? And then one more would be six. So that doesn't work. Six, seven, and six doesn't match. Charles, is your hand up? What do you want to say, Charles? Um, which book is this? Oh, okay. This is our dark orange math textbook. Yep. So dark orange math text, and it's page 58. Page 58. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Is this one seven? Is this 10 frame seven? Let's see, five, six, seven, eight. No, that one's eight. Let's try the third 10 frame. Five, six, seven. Ooh, that one's seven. So we're gonna draw a line from the first group of bowling pins down to the 10 frame that has seven dots in it. Should we find the box of the 10? Yeah. So we're trying to find the 10 frame matching that the has numbers. seven box in it. We're matching the numbers. Okay, let's do that second group of bowling pins. Let's see. One, two, three, four, Five, six. Oh, so this one, there's six bowling pins. Which group of these 10 frames has six dots in it? Which one? What do you think? There's this first one is five, six, six dots. So we're gonna draw a line from the six bowling pins to the one with six dots in it. So we're just matching. Okay, let's see if y'all can do the rest of these by yourself. Let's see. We're gonna be walking around and helping and let me know at home if you need some help. We're gonna see if we can do the rest of these by ourselves.
Is Vander Andy? Yes. I want oh. to show you my worksheet. Okay, Vina, let me make yours bigger. Let's see. Very nice job, Vina. Wonderful work. We're going to start story time in just a minute, okay? And Catherine, let me see yours. Very nice matching. Catherine, awesome. You can put yours away if you want. We're going to start story time in just a minute. And Charles, let's see that matching. Very nice, Charles. You can put yours away. We're going to start story time in just a minute. Yes, Vina. What are we going to, what are we going, when are we going to use these blocks? I think we're going to use those today in math. I think maybe your parents just got them out like in case you needed them. Yeah. But you can play with them for a minute until we do story time. Okay. Nice job with math, everybody, today. We're going to go and do some checking off on our schedule. Let's see what's next. We are going to check off math down there. There we go. Next on our schedule, story time, and then pack up and go home. And then I think you have a break, and then some Spanish after your break. Okay, we're going to read a book about bats and story time because we didn't, we kind of ran out of time in science. So this book is called Bats. So B A T S B A T S B A T S. That it looks like there's a full moon on the book. And look, you can see those are the bat's thumbs right there. Those are the bat's thumbs. Pretty cool. These are its arms. 
That's the bat's arms. And those are the bat's fingers right there. What are legs? Those are the bat's legs. And there's its tail. Okay. Yeah. Bats have played an important part in stories. People have thought bats were evil spirits. Others have thought they were friends of ghosts and witches or vampires. Bats. But not <laughs> yes. But not really. Not really. Bats dive, swoop, and weave through dark night sky. Their creature, these creatures are nocturnal, meaning they're awake at night and asleep during the day. Most people haven't even seen a bat, but I know some of you have already said you see bats in your neighborhood, right? Maybe, yeah, they were maybe Mexican free tail bats, maybe a little brown bat, I know for. Maybe, um, or maybe you were really lucky and saw an Eastern red bat. Okay, so bats have been around for a long time. The oldest bat fossil is about 50 million years old. Whoa! And this is a little brown bat. We learned a little bit about those in science. So you can see there's its thumb, here's its arm, and these are its fingers. And it has thin skin stretched between its fingers like a web, and that's what makes its wing. Bat wings are different from bird wings or insects wings. Bat wings have long arm bones with very long finger bones. A thin skin layer called a membrane stretches between the bones and the thumb ends with a claw. That's called a noctual bat, this type of bat. Cool. Some bats can fly as fast as 15 miles an hour. This is the giant flying fox bat and it hangs upside down with its toe claws. When a bat lands, it flips upside down and hangs by its toe claws. It uses these claws to move around. Bats choose many kind of dark nooks and crannies to live in. These bats are, these places are called roosts. Many bats live together in caves, attics, barns, or tall trees. In places where it gets cold in the winter, some kinds of bats migrate to warmer weather. Others roost or hibernate until springtime. And these are Mexican free-tailed bats. Those are the ones where the biggest bat colony is in Austin. 1.5 million Mexican free-tailed bats. Oh, so this is the epaulette bat. They eat fruit. Look, so they don't have to use echolocation to find insects, they use eat fruit. Bats live in every continent on the world except for Antarctica. Most of them live in warm climates where there are many insects and fruits and flowers to feed on. There are about a thousand different types of bats. Oh, here's a little brown bat and this is an illustration or showing you a picture of what echolocation might look like if we could see it, but we can't really see it. But a bat calls out and it makes a little sound, a little chirping sound, and the sound bounces off of an insect that it's chasing, and the sound bounces back, and the bat knows exactly where the insect is. So cool. Most bats eat insects, and those kind use a special part of type of seeing called echolocation. A bat sends out a rapid beeping sound, really high pitched. When hunting, the sound waves hit an insect. The waves bounce back to the bat's ears as an echo. These echoes tell the bat the size and shape and the exact location of the insect. So bats that eat fruit don't really need to use echolocation, right? They use their sense of sight and their sense of smell. This is called a nectar bat. Nectar bats eat the sweet juice in flowers. There are fruit and nectar eating bats too. These bats help pollinate plants. So we can have food like avocados, figs, and bananas. They also help scatter seeds. This is a fishing bat. There's even bats that eat fish. Wow. Yes, Charles, did you have a question or something you wanted to say? I do. Is there one? 
Oh, that way, get us out. Oh, you forgot. All right, let me know if you remember, okay? Oh, and then there's even the bats that drink blood, vampire bats. Blood is the only food for a vampire bat. They are found in Mexico and Central America and South America, so they don't really live where we live. And when a vampire bat finds an animal, it makes a tiny little cut with its sharp teeth in the animal's skin. And then it just licks up the blood that comes out. The animals barely even feel it. Sometimes they're asleep and they don't even wake up. So many scary stories have been told about vampire bats, like Dracula, but they're not true. Vampire bats don't really turn into vampires. Oh, so we've got a dawn bat, a tube-nosed bat, a Jamaican fruit bat, an epaulet bat. Here's a little brown bat. They sometimes use their tail to help catch insects like that. Here in the springtime, female bats get together in roosts to have their babies. And they make little bat nurseries. They all keep their babies together. And the baby bat is called a pup. And the mama bat holds her pup like that in her little, in her tail sometimes like that. There's the pup right there. She makes like a little basket with her tail, so cute. As soon as the pup is born, its mother hangs head down again and the pup nurses while the baby is being cradled by the mom's wing. The pup clings to its mother's fur using its own sharp teeth and claws to hold on. The young pup grows quickly. At 10 days old, the pup is almost too heavy for its mother to carry while flying. At three months old, it's flying on nightly hunting trips by itself. And when it's about one year old, a baby bat is fully grown. So there's the baby bat clinging on to its mother's fur while she's flying and catching insects. Today in many places, bat populations are getting smaller and some bats are even endangered. One reason is that many people still don't like bats around. So they don't, so they don't, so they kind of destroy their habitats. Maybe they don't want bats in caves but bats are actually really great to have around because bats eat things like mosquitoes and bugs that we do not like and we don't like to have a lot of mosquitoes around, right? But uh, insect eating bats love to eat mosquitoes. So it's great if there's some bats living in your neighborhood, that's wonderful. Yes, Charles, what do you want to say? What did you want to say, Charles? If you, if you, if you're thinking about insects, it's not, it's, it's. Ford, I can't hear Charles even though he raised his hand. What, Charles? If you're thinking about insects, it's not true. But if you're just thinking about any bugs, it is true. Bugs eat bugs. Oh, and some bugs eat bugs too, right? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. Okay, last page, here we go. Bats play an important role in nature. And it's fun to learn about them. So if these kids are looking outside and they saw bats. Yeah, if you stay up, if they come out around dusk, like right when the sun's going down, right around sunset, that's when the bats come out. Maybe you can see them in your neighborhood. They kind of just look like birds, but if they eat insects, if they're using echolocation, you can listen really carefully and you might hear them going chip, 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 a little bit. And then you can think, oh, those might be bats, right? Okay, so that was it for today. Let's go ahead and check off story time. Let's see, we're checking off story time. So if you're at home, you're done. And if you're in the classroom, it's time to stand up and head outside, okay? So let's go ahead and say bye to everybody. And we'll see you in the morning. We'll see you in the morning. Bye, 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 bye.